Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everybody. So we meet again uh, this week for the subject on amplifier design, especially when we add with the noise figure. So I'm sorry I'm not available again today due to the uh, the job uh, workshop that I need to attend. But I won't leave my class uh, without a lecture or without a task uh, unless uh, something else happen. Okay, so today our class will continue on uh, on this uh, amplifier design. But before that, okay, so let's recall back what you have learned about the amplifier design. So we start uh, with the amplifier design with first uh, with a few definitions, uh, three definitions of uh, amplifier. Of amplifier. So we have the definition on the power gain, available power gain, and the transducer uh, power gain. So the most uh, useful uh, gain definition uh, in this topic is on the transducer uh, power gain. Then after that, we proceed with the what we call the stability. So you have been introduced about the stability and we have the two condition which is unconditionally stability and conditionally stability. So unstability, uh, unconditional stability means that your system will work. Uh, everything inside the Smith chart is con the, uh, considered stable. Uh, for conditional stability, so you have uh, the the uh, the constant uh, stability circle will be intersect with the Smith chart. So there will be an area in the Smith chart. Uh, some part is uh, conditionally stability, and uh, some part is stable, and another part is unstable. So besides to test uh, the stability circle, uh, uh, the stability by drawing the stability circle, so you can also use the k delta or mu test in order to determine the stability. Then we proceed with the uh, design of, of the amplifier with the maximum gain. After we design with the maximum gain, so you have learned about designing the amplifier using a specified gain. Okay, so specified gain, actually you reduce a little bit uh, from the maximum gain. Let's say the maximum gain is 10 dB gain uh, then specific guide specified gain uh, you introduce maybe less maybe 8 db gain uh, and by introducing or lower the gain so actually you introduce some part loss uh, some part of the matching uh, so that we you introduce a little bit loss in order to get the specified gain and today we will proceed with the design of the amplifier uh, or low noise amplifier okay so we will introduce uh, to design the low noise amplifier so at this condition so you will design uh, amplifier with certain condition of noise plus uh, maximum gain so the knowledge of maximum gain that you learn here is still necessary uh, to include in this section. Okay, so uh, let's see again. So in your assignment, so I relate a little bit on your assignment. So in your assignment, you can choose to include the low noise uh, amplifier part or not. Okay, so it's up to you and what is important you do the simulation okay based on the specification given and you produce the s parameters results 
if you don't get um, you uh, exactly or, or what you want you include in the discussion of course okay so let's say you got the as a good as to what a good as one one and a good as one two but maybe as two two is a little bit shifted uh, but still okay so you can include in the uh, discussion all right so today we'll proceed with the design of the low noise amplifier so low noise amplifier design uh, all right so so it is necessary to include for example at the receiver you will have a uh, this disturbance such as a noise so if you recall get back that you have the snr signal to noise ratio so you have the signal you have the noise so this is the gap that you need to keep in order for your signal to be received for example let's say you have a 2 db gap okay so this is the minimum that uh, you allow uh, noise uh, the gap uh, for example the, the minimum noise figure that you determine so that the system will work if it's lower than that uh, so your system will not work for example astro uh, you get 2 db for example okay uh, if it is uh, the gap is 1.5 dB, so you will have a loss in the signal. So here you need to know that, uh, okay, in order to design the low noise amplifier, so you still need to, to draw what we call the constant gain circle plus the constant noise figure, constant circle circle of constant noise figure so a two uh, circle that you need to draw on the smith chart okay so that's mean you determine the specified noise figure that you want then you match it with the maximum gain uh, or of the amplifier so in order to do that okay so you have this formula in order to calculate the uh, the f uh, or the noise figure that you want f f min means the minimum noise figure so, noise, uh, minimum noise figure so noise figure So this is the noise figure and here in order to draw the uh, constant noise figure circle so you need to determine the n okay so of course you have the gamma s gamma optimum so all the value will be given uh, rn z naught uh, and this value must if it is given in the uh, db in db so you need to have an anti-lock value you put here so when you get the noise figure parameters so you can include uh, in this in order to get or in order to get the center of the uh, constant noise figure and the radius of the constant noise figure okay so you have the center of noise figure and radius of the noise uh, figure. So basically, uh, you can determine that normally F min or F uh, is given a specified noise figure. Uh, and from that, you can calculate the noise figure parameter and, and you can draw the uh, constant noise figure circle. Okay. so the the derivation in order to get uh, this formula okay now is already in reflection in terms of reflection 
coefficient. However, the previous uh, the basic uh, equation is based on the uh, soft admittance, okay, in terms of y, and then from this y, okay, uh, it's been changed to reflection coefficient, and finally you get the uh, these uh, results in terms of reflection coefficient. But don't worry, maybe in the final exam, uh, this equation will be uh, given. Okay, so we proceed. Uh, okay. In order to design the uh, noise figure, amplif low noise amplifier, so you need to have a maximum gain at the point of the noise figure. So you need still need to calculate the GS and GL and then you can get the maximized condition uh, when gamma S and gamma L is conjugate of S11 and S22. So you get the GS max and from here you can get the normalized gain factor of GS and GL. So what the use of this GS and GL? Okay. So the use of this GS and GL are, are used in order to determine the, uh, the constant gain circle. So you need to have from this, you need to draw the constant gain circle. And from that, you get the CS and RS, the center of uh, gain circle and the radius of the gain circle. So what's the formula? So you need to recall back the formula uh, to get the CSRS. Okay, so the formula is uh, where's the formula? Okay, so you need to recall back. Uh, you can refer to the uh, previous section. Uh, Okay, so one of it is to have the GS S11 conjugate uh, 1 minus 1 minus GS S11 power of 2. Okay, and RS 1 minus GS 1 minus S11 to 1 minus 1 and the GS S11 power 2 okay so basically so you have the formula on the uh, to draw the constant noise figure and also to draw the constant gain circle so due to that let's see an example so this example is from the uh, book okay so a gas mass pack is biased for a minimum noise figure with the following scattering parameters. So all the S parameters are given at 4 GHz, impeded uh, load uh, at 50 Ohm, F min 1.6 dB, gamma op is 0 0.6 to 100 degree, and resistance here 20 Ohm. So for design purpose, assume the device is unilateral okay to facilitate uh, uh, the calculation so we assume unilateral although s12 here is 0 0.05 amplitude with 26 degree calculate the maximum error in gt result from this assumption then design an amplifier having 2 db noise figure so you have the f mean is 1.6 db but you want f the noise figure that you want is 2 dB. Okay, so this is what you want. The specified uh, uh, noise figure, which is 2 dB. Okay, as usual, okay, in order to, to design, first step that you need is to determine the stability. Okay, so you can check using the K delta or mu and also 
so you can notice that we assume here S12 equivalent to 0 uh, is unilateral and S11 and S22 is less than 1. So when we know that, for example, uh, when we calculate the K and delta, we notice here K is bigger than 1, delta is less than 1, and we know directly, so this is unconditionally stability. Conditionally stability. So that's mean your uh, stability circle is totally outside from the Smith chart. Okay, so that's mean everything inside the Smith chart is a stable region. So later you can choose any value of gamma S or gamma L which is inside the Smith chart. Step number two. Step number two here is being asked to calculate the maximum error in GT. So if question don't ask, you you can ignore, you can uh, uh, not calculating this uh, error. But if question ask you to do so, so you need to calculate the error. So in order to calculate the error, okay, first you need to calculate the unilateral figure of Mary. So where it only needs all the value of S parameters. And when you know the U, so you include in this formula, right? So include the U, okay? Where is the ratio between the GT and GTU? So that's mean uh, for the case uh, of uh, normal, uh, without the unilateral case and with the unilateral case. And here when you compare the ratio, so you get this ratio and you can also change into db by log. Okay. And here you can see that when you introduce, uh, you assume unilateral, so you have uh, an error between minus 0 0.5 until 0 0.53 dB. So maybe this is acceptable around plus minus 0 0.5 dB for the error. Okay. Alright. So number step number two is if it is being asked. Okay. Step number three is to draw. Okay. The noise figure circle parameters. Okay, so formula is given, so you just need to include or to, to put the value, uh, the available value inside this formula. And here, okay, so be careful, you need to anti log. So you need to have the anti log of, so F is 2 dB, so you have, you need to have a 10 to the power of minus 0 0.02 and here you have the and not not put that not minus why not 10 log x is equivalent to 2 db so you have the 0 10 to the power of okay 0 0.2 anti log okay so this anti log 10 to the power of 0 0.2 and this is anti log 10 to the power of 0 0.16 and others you just include all the rn 20 z not 50 gamma op is given so you get the n and from the n you include here in order to determine the the center of the noise figure and the radius of the noise figure. So you get this value. Okay. So just to recall how to draw it. Okay. So you know that one Smith chart has one unit of radius. Of radius. 
and if you measure for example it depends uh, on your ruler or the size of the smith chart let's say for example here is measure 8 cm so one unit is equal to 8 cm so here you have the 0 0.56 units so that mean is 0 0.56 times 8 cm so it is approximately how, how much uh, 4.48 cm uh, 4. okay approximately at the angle of 100 degree so where is the angle of 100 degree so it is here okay so then you take a ruler so i don't have a ruler okay so i have a handphone so so take a ruler you make a straight line from the center of the smith chart okay sorry the ruler is also not good okay so you get this blue line at 100 degree then you measure uh, from the center of smith chart you measure 4.48 centimeter so you get this is the cf and then you measure the rf so rf uh, is 0 0.24 times 8 centimeter is approximately 1.76 centimeter so from the center of uh, of the noise figure so you have the 1.76 centimeter and this circle okay this blue circle is the noise figure circle okay at 2 db okay at 2 db so now we want to have uh, so this is circle of the noise figure at 2 db now we want to find the the partner of this okay so that's mean uh, what is the maximum gain of gs at this situation okay so in order to do that so actually we need to have a, a trial and error condition okay so here for example uh, so i choose gs equivalent to 1 db so if gs is equivalent 1 db so that's mean okay so uh, G, gs small gs is 0 0.8 then i need to calculate the cs and rs and from this i able to draw this red circle So, unfortunately, okay, so the noise figure circle and this gain circle for GS equivalent 1 dB is, is, is intersect with each other. We want to find a value of gamma S, uh, which is just uh, the two circle uh, touch at the end of each other. So, in order to do that, we, we need to increase the value of GS in order to reduce the size of the constant gain circle so here okay we choose the second one so this is the try and error technique gs equivalent to 1.5 db so we choose 1.5 db we get gs 0 0.905 cs with this and this and we draw the another constant gain circle so this orange circle so again, unfortunately, it intersect with the, the noise figure and we need to reduce further this, the chosen uh, noise figure. So now we choose GS 1.7 dB. Uh, so this try and error technique is uh, maybe is useful when you have the software, but here you don't have. So you need to do it step by step. Okay. GS, you assume GS, you get the small GS in order to get the 
center and radius of the constant gain circle and and finally you get this okay so you can see the blue and the black circle uh, is touching each other and at the touching point you can choose that this is the gamma s okay it's just to get the gamma s so when you know this gamma s okay you, you can do the uh, matching so at this point you get that the noise figure is 2 db and gs is 1.7 db and you get the value of uh, gamma s here okay for to do the matching okay so next step is to get the uh, gamma l or the gain at the load so here you have settled the part of the source so you get the gs you get the gamma s now we look on the at the load okay so at the load okay for a maximum gain gl so gamma l must be conjugate of s22 so here the s22 value of conjugate is 0 0.560 degree and and from that and we have assumed the maximum gain the unilateral so we can calculate gl is equivalent to 1 over 1 minus x22 to, to the power of 2. And here we managed to get the GL is 1.25 dB. And then, so GS is known, GL is known. Now we need to calculate the G0. So G0 here is s to 1 to the power of 2 and equivalent to 5.58 dB. And here, okay, so when you add up, the total gain is 8.53 dB. So is it the end of your solution? So not yet. Not yet. Okay, because you need to do the matching. Okay. Uh, you need to do the matching. So you already know the gamma S and you also know the gamma l so you need to do the okay the start matching so if you remember you have the open circuit short circuit series or parallel so you have uh, four options of start matching anything you can do this uh, uh, matching example in your assignment if needed okay so you need to use uh, or to design this okay all right so there is also question being asked so here you design the noise figure with the maximum gain at the specified noise figure what happened when the minimum noise figure occur so for the for this case f min is 1.6 db that's mean the chosen f is equivalent to f min is 1.6 db what happened Okay, so at this point, at this point, when you choose at the minimum noise figure, so gamma s, you don't need to find it from the switch chart. Because at this point, gamma s is equivalent to the gamma optimum. And for this case, uh, gamma s equivalent to gamma optimum is 0. 6 to 100 degree 
So you already got the gamma s. Okay, so you don't need to uh, you don't need to uh, find it from the uh, you need to don't need to draw the constant noise figure. Don't need to draw the constant gain circle with this trial and error uh, technique. So, because you can get directly this value. And we know this value. Okay. So, you can uh, do the matching. Uh, but, of course, the first step to design this with the minimum noise figure. So, you need still to follow... The first step is to find the stability circle, the stability, to check the stability. So that's mean k delta, and if needed, uh, to draw the constant step, uh, the stability circle. If needed, you need to draw. Okay. This is compulsory. Second, if the same procedure as before, if needed, you need to to calculate the error that's mean the gain error if needed if being asked uh, by the question so next step so in this case uh, you don't need to draw the noise figure circle so you don't need so you already get the gamma s okay gamma s check Gamma L, next is to get the Gamma L. So, Gamma L here you can get from the uh, basic formula of Gamma L. L S22 plus S12, S21, Gamma S, because you already know the Gamma S, 1 minus S11, Gamma S. Okay, and here you get the value. So check gamma L is check. Next, you know the gamma S. So this is 3A. This is 3B. So next, of course, you need to draw to calculate the maximum gain. And here, okay, so you need to calculate the gs 1 minus gamma s the power of 2 1 minus s11 gamma s the power of 2 equivalent of what then gl 1 minus s22 1 minus s22 gamma l to the power of 2 okay so is this just a basic formula which is uh, for non-unilateral uh, maximum gain okay because you get the value of gamma s directly and also gamma l so gamma s you get gamma l you get from gamma s and the gs referring to gamma s and the gl referring to gamma l and g naught is equivalent to s21 to, to the power 2 and the total gain is gs plus g0 plus gl okay in db so that's step number four step number five is to do the matching and finally okay so you do the matching uh, Alright, so here, make sure this is the question ask you to use mass pad. So this is the mass pad. If you ask BJT, you need to draw the BJT. So this is the matching part. Matching part. And this is the load. This is the source. Source and the... Uh, the resistant uh, the uh, source all right okay 
So the final exam, the 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 second test, will test you based on this question. Question number one, example, and question number two, example. Okay. So some part of the previous final exam has asked almost the same question. So next, okay, so I, I, I got, uh, I take, this is also from the previous final exam uh, question related to the uh, amplifier design. Okay, so let's do this together. Okay, I think 2018, oh, I'm not sure, okay. So a two-part scattering parameters on microwave device can be represented as below. So it is given the all the S parameters value. Okay, question A, describe the characteristic of these two-part networks. Okay, so question asks, based on the information so you need to elaborate what your opinion about uh, what's your analysis from the s parameters okay here whatever anything uh, that uh, appears on in your head you just write okay so five marks maybe five points or maybe two or three points uh, okay Okay, so here you can say that, uh, again, maybe this is a two-port device, two-port network. Okay, second, S21 is more than one, so maybe it has a gain. Number three is what? So S11 is not equal to S22 and S21 is not equal to S12, so it is not reciprocal. Okay, so not symmetry. Okay, then you can say that S11 and S12 is 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, so value is small. So it's not one, so it's not matching. So these the things that from this uh, as parameters and others you can say the isolation, uh, the transmission coefficient, uh, and finally you know that this because of it has gain, so it also act can act as amplifier. So many things you can explain. Uh, it's just a free marks. So next, B, discuss the significance of stability in amplifier design and give two types of stability in amplifier design. So here you can describe about the unconditionally stability and the conditionally stability so here you need to elaborate okay number c is five marks so it's using the k delta so k delta formula is given so you just need to calculate uh, the value and here you can check okay so what from my calculation delta is 0 0.818 minus 1645 degree k is equivalent to 1.013 this from my calculation okay and we know that k is more than 1 delta is less than 1 so this is the case for unconditionally stability.
that means everything in the Smith chart is stable uh, region. Okay, next, what is the maximum gain under the unilateral case? Okay, what is the maximum gain under unilateral case? So here, it asks you to calculate the uh, maximum gain. Under the unilateral condition. So you know that, okay, for the unilateral, you assume S12 equivalent to 0. Although here, uh, the value is 0 0.2 minus 10 degree. So when you want to calculate the maximum gain for this case, so you assume gamma S equivalent to gamma in conjugate equivalent to S11 conjugate. And also gamma L is equivalent to gamma R equivalent to S22 conjugate. And here, when you assume that, actually, okay, you get the GS equivalent to 1 over 1 minus S11 to the power of 2. GL is 1 minus 1 minus S22 to the power of 2. And of course, G0 is s to 1 to the power of 2 and you get the gtu is just adding this gs plus g0 plus gl in db so here uh, my answer is how much is 16.026 or equivalent to 12 db for the question number uh, uh, D. Okay, so later you can do this as an exercise. Uh, okay, and you can submit this on Thursday. Okay, so next, so because I already give the answer. Find the output reflection coefficient uh, if the load ZS is equivalent to 40 ohm. So I shouldn't give the answer. So maybe I just uh, ask you to do this as an exercise and you do the submission. Find the output reflection coefficient gamma out. Okay, so it's given ZS, so this is just a basic. Okay, uh, so when you know that ZS, you can calculate the gamma S. ZS equivalent to ZS minus Z0, ZS plus Z0. Okay, uh, then from that, you can calculate the gamma out. Gamma out equivalent to S22 plus S12 S21 gamma S1 minus S11 gamma S. Okay, so you include everything, you get the value of gamma out. And also the same as the question F, okay, in order to get gamma in, is given ZL. So from that ZL is gamma L is ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0. And you get the gamma in equivalent to S11 plus S12 S21 gamma L divided by 1 minus 
S to 2 gamma N okay and each of it gives three marks three marks and finally comment your answer in E and F so this value so you need to look on this value of gamma S and gamma L to answer this question okay so in this case okay uh, is it the value of gamma s and gamma l is the same as what you calculate here okay. so if it is not the same so that mean the gain that you calculate in e and f is uh, lower than the maximum gain so it is maybe a specified gain that you need to calculate okay so that's all for my uh, lecture today and before i sign out so uh, okay because i have a, a workshop today so i need to to make sure you are doing uh, something during this lecture time okay so i want you to rewrite or re-answer the question q2 okay uh, and submit this uh, work as an, uh, your activity uh, so i will give uh, maybe bonus mark as previous uh, just to make sure you understand what you have learned okay all right so thank you very much uh, we see on thursday if i'm available if not maybe we can see uh, next week for a new topic related to the uh, oscillator design all right okay bye bye